In this video, we will cover installing a fresh Drupal site using the Drupal installer. Your environment is set to go and you have created an empty database for your site. Now what do you do? Fortunately, the Drupal community wants installation to be as easy as possible. So the first time a new Drupal site is visited, the user is prompted with a very easy step-by-step -step installer, which we will now go through. If you have installed Drupal on a web host with a domain name, then at this point you will simply go to that domain name to visit your site and to run the installer. If you have installed Drupal locally on your own system, you may need to follow instructions from whatever tool it is that you are using to power your LAMP or WAMP stack on your system. For example, I am using MAMP, which requires the user to access the site through port 8888. I'm also using the default hostname from MAMP, which is localhost. And so in order for me to access the site that I'm now setting up, and for which I just downloaded Drupal and set up a database, I will go to localhost colon 8888. And I'm going to press return. This takes me to the Drupal installer, which as you can see, is fairly straightforward in the steps that it provides. Step one. The language that you're going to choose here is going to be the language that your administrators and content editors are most comfortable with, not necessarily the language with which you are going to deliver content. If you want to deliver content in various languages, that's set up through multilingual settings later on. For now, we're going to choose English so that the administrative interface is in the English language. Step two is to choose an installation profile. If you are installing plain Drupal core, then your choices will simply be what you see here, standard and minimal. You're going to choose standard for the majority of the sites that you might set up, and you will only choose minimal if you truly are an advanced user and you intend to heavily customize the Drupal site that you are setting up. The Drupal community creates a plethora of installation profiles that pre-configure a site to meet specific needs. If you have downloaded one of these profiles, such as the popular Drupal Commons profile for Drupal 7, then you will be able to choose that profile from this list when you're installing your Drupal site. At the time of recording this video, there are not a lot of installation profiles for Drupal 8 because Drupal 8 is still in beta. It is very likely, however, that shortly after the release candidate is out, that installation profiles for Drupal 8 will begin to appear. And it is worthwhile to look up these installation profiles before building your Drupal site, because a lot of the work for what you need may have already been done for you. And we will look at installation profiles in another video. You'll notice that the step to verify requirements was just passed through very quickly and nothing actually appeared to happen except moving on to the fourth step of setting up the database. This is because verification of requirements happens on the back end side and it's just making sure that the environment that you have set up is capable of running a Drupal site. At this point, you need to hook into the database that you have created for your Drupal site. Drupal is a content management system, and as such, it needs a place to store that content and to store the activity that happens with that content. Some configuration elements are also stored in your Drupal database. One of the great differences between Drupal 7 and Drupal 8 is that Drupal 8 has taken some of the configuration settings out of being stored in the database and put them into code. And we will look at this in another video. We need to connect to the database before we can continue. The database, remember, has already been set up when you set up your environment you needed to create this database. So you know the name, the username, and the password for the database that you have created. And I'm going to enter those here. The first step is to enter the database name. So I've created a database called D80205, and I've entered that here in database name. The next step is to put in your username. I have left my username as root. This is not necessarily best practice, but I've done that for the purposes of this video to make things easy. That'll be your default database username if you're not setting up a database user for your databases and I will also now go in and enter my password. The Advanced tab is available for advanced settings. 
So if you know that your database has a table name prefix, for example, which is something that will happen frequently if you're using web hosts such as GoDaddy or Media Temple, then you will need to enter that here. If you have a port number for your database, you will also need to enter that into this field. Some web hosts will actually have a separate URL for your database. And if that's the case, then your host field will need to indicate what that URL is as well. Ideally, whatever web host you're using will have good help documentation to help you find the actual information for where your database can be accessed. At this point, I will save and continue, and the site will now be installed. So we'll wait while the site installs. What's happening here is that all of the modules that are part of Drupal core and that make it easy for you to set up a Drupal site out of the box with a fair amount of functionality are being installed and many of them enabled for you at this time. This is coming from the standard installation profile. If you use the minimal installation profile, then a lot of these would not be installed out of the box and you would have to make your choices after the install took place. Thanks for watching this O'Reilly training video. If you'd like more information on this topic, click on Learn More. Don't forget to subscribe to the O'Reilly Video Training YouTube channel for more tutorials. And be sure to like us on Facebook.